when I first got involved in aged care, uh, there was a wonderful lady in Victoria who's now passed away, unfortunately, who took me under her wing. And whenever, whenever I was assaulted uh, by conference audiences, as you were in those days, because Australians were incredibly frustrated with the promise of reform and it never arriving, this wonderful lady used to stand up and almost say, leave them alone. So I, I know that consumers are incredibly important um, in influencing policy, and I think the thing that I've enjoyed most in my job, uh, or various jobs, over 30 years of, of social policy is actually the joy of trying to blend evidence with consumer views and uh, making up policy as you go along in the process of consultations. I think that is um, it's a wonderful opportunity. So our next speaker, I think you will all know, Kate Swaffer. Uh, Kate and I have worked um, really closely. Um, Kate has uh, a lot of achievements to her credit, uh, including uh, persuading Alzheimer's Australia to set up a, a group of people with um, dementia. Uh, she's been a wonderful support to me, and um, I look forward to hearing from her again. Thank you for that generous introduction, Glenn. Um, my first slide, it's got a little image of fear and courage, and I'm feeling a significant amount of fear in speaking today, partly because I can no longer follow my own notes. But there might also be some people in the audience slightly fearful of what I'm about to say. So, so thank you for being here. Um, it's going to take us all a lot of courage to work together to improve the lives of people with dementia and their family support people. The choir this morning was uplifting and inspiring. It was lovely to see small children and that intergenerational um, experience and to have singing in the, in the auditorium. The final song, What a Wonderful World by Rod Stewart, um, very much epitomises how I feel about life. It is a wonderful world and you're very lucky, those of you visiting Australia, particularly coming to Perth, it's such a beautiful city. Thank you for having us, Perth, and for putting on such fabulous weather, even though we're not seeing very much of it. Um, and I do feel that in spite of living with dementia, in spite of the losses, in spite of the increasing disabilities, in spite of the changes that are happening to me, I am living a good life, and I am always, always still here. Advocacy organisations such as Alzheimer's Society UK, um, and I really applaud their work with the Dementia Friends Program um, and Alzheimer's Australia, uh, taking on the Dementia Friendly Initiatives recently, and also the work of service providers. You all need consumers, but we also very much need you. And only by working together can we create communities that properly support the needs and care of people with dementia and their families. I'd personally like to thank Glenn Rees and Ida Buttress for their previous roles with Alzheimer's Australia and to welcome Mr Graham Samuel and Carol Bennett, our new President and CEO, and look for, I look forward to working with them. I'd also like to say thank you to Mark Wardman for uh, being here and for all of the work that ADI does, and in particular thanks to Alzheimer's Western Australia for hosting this conference and in particular Rhonda Parker and Jason Burton. They've done an amazing job pulling it together. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Edie and Anne for their very poignant presentation yesterday, um, and Helga for hers, and I know we're going to hear from her again today. And there were a number of other people who gave very inspiring presentations in some of the concurrent sessions yesterday. Um, and who are going to be speaking today, later today and tomorrow. So it's great to have so many people here with dementia and so many people presenting. So I think we all know the figures, but it is, dementia is a terminal progressive illness and there are treatments for some types of dementia, but no cure and no disease modifying drugs. So it is imperative that we improve the care for people with dementia. So dementia friendly means really, really including us. 
People without dementia cannot know what it means to live with dementia. We can inform you on what it means and what is dementia friendly to us. We need to be involved so that it is no longer about us without us. We have the lived experience and can educate and help raise awareness about dementia. And by involving us, it will also empower other people with dementia to take more control of their own lives. I've always felt a little bit uncomfortable with the term dementia friendly. And I think it, we've gone too far down the track around the world to move away from that term. But surely we're all meant to be friendly. It is just a characteristic of being kind to each other. But I think having dementia friendly communities is far more than just being friendly. It's about respect. Real respect for each other. It's about seeing us as people, not just seeing the symptoms of dementia. It's about equality. It's about the state of equality, of being equal, of being seen as equals. It's about accessible communities so that people with dementia have the same access to all services as everybody else in the community. We have wheelchair signs and ramps all around the world now. We have hearing loops in all buildings. Hopefully, we'll have accessible communities for people with dementia as well. So that we can go to the bank comfortably and feel safe to get money out. Very simple things like that. It's about autonomy, about having autonomy, about our own independence. It's about inclusion and real inclusion, not just tokenistic inclusion. And too often, it's just one or two people speaking out, representing the 47 million of us around the world. It's about supporting our disabilities. People with dementia at conferences being asked to shorten their speeches at short notice just to accommodate changes in an agenda is actually not supporting our disabilities. And I felt quite sorry for Anne and Edie yesterday being asked to do that. It's not dementia friendly. It doesn't support the disabilities. It's not really dementia friendly asking people with dementia to stand up. It would be have been much, far more respectful yesterday to acknowledge that 10% of the delegates here are people with dementia. And if you look around the room, it's very hard to tell who has got dementia and who hasn't. That's far more dementia friendly. A dementia friendly community is a place where people living with dementia are supported to live a high quality of life with meaning, purpose and value and where they are included in every conversation. I'm very proud to be co-chair and a co-founder of an international organisation that is now the pink body for people with dementia called Dementia Alliance International. We have a stand in the exhibition hall so you can come and see us there. Um, but we advocate not only for better care, but to be included in every single conversation. And as a group, we're proud that the World Dementia Council, which started without representation of a person with dementia, now has at least one person with dementia on the council, uh, a woman called Hilary Doxford from the UK. And whilst it's difficult for her to represent all of us, at least we have representation. It's very important that we are in the conversations about us. Dementia-friendly community is about accessible communities. It is about our very basic human rights. Before I had a dementia, it was my human right to participate in society completely. That changed when I lost my driver's licence and I was asked to leave my place of employment. They did not see me as a person with disabilities nor offer any support. It's about being treated under the guidelines of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and within each country's 
Disability Discrimination Act. It's a very important next step, I think, in dementia-friendly communities and for the rights of people with dementia and their families. So in dementia-friendly community projects around the world, nothing should happen without the interest, inclusion and commitment from people with dementia. As a, on a six-month contract with Alzheimer's Australia late last year and early this year, I worked in the Kiama, on the Kiama project and they were finding it difficult to get people to, with dementia to join their Dementia Alliance group, which is a group of individuals and uh, organisations and businesses trying to make dementia, um, Kayama, a dementia-friendly community. The issue with putting a group of people with significant, sometimes, disabilities into a group of able-bodied, often loud-spoken people is that we have trouble keeping up. We have trouble finding our voice. And so, in line with the dementia working groups around the world, Scotland being the first one set up in 2002, which, is, which are groups of people with dementia who guide and inform others about what's best for them. Um, and Alzheimer's Australia set up the Dementia Advisory Committee in about two years ago, I've forgotten exactly when, um, based on the Scottish model. And there are six dementia working groups around the world now. But Kayama has its own Kayama Dementia Advisory Committee. And this group meets separately. And it looks at the action plan that the community is putting together for making Kayama a dementia-friendly community. And they're having a say about whether it is or it isn't dementia-friendly. And they also have representation um, for people with less impairments on the local Dementia Alliance Council. So it is about full inclusion and being in all the conversations it is our journey and our voice, and by re-empowering people with dementia to speak up for themselves, it will make it possible for people whose voices have previously seldom been heard to contribute to shaping the matters that affect them. No longer will people with dementia be told by people without dementia what we're feeling, what's best for us, and whilst we still have a voice of our own, we will be able to advocate for ourselves. It's no longer a phenomenon that we are speaking out. There are literally hundreds of us around the world living better lives than what the community expects and speaking up for ourselves. There are a few key steps, I think, to, to a dementia-friendly community. And the first one is to establish a local dementia advisory committee made up of people with dementia and supported by their partners if they need assistance. And to establish a local dementia alliance or a dementia working group that's made up of individuals and organisations working together with people with dementia to improve their community. We need to raise awareness of dementia, not just five minute vignettes about dementia, but proper education. And I think that um, I heard Graham Samuel say in the parliamentary summit recently, recently that he is committed to a program similar to Dementia Friends in the UK. And I really welcome that step because that's real education for people in the community. And it is also about increasing the education in our healthcare sector. And it's working with organisations to promote things like volunteering, and employment for people with younger onset dementia who were employed when they were diagnosed, with meaningful engagement, not things like playing bingo. I think most people know my distaste of bingo here, but real meaningful, engaging opportunities for people with dementia. Opportunities like choirs, and a, a lady from Melbourne with dementia, Maxine, spoke eloquently yesterday in an interview style session, and she's been in choirs all her life and has had to recently give up a choir because the choir mistress would not make any compensations for her disabilities. That's a very simple thing that could change the life of Maxine if the choir mistress had made some accommodation for her disabilities. Very simple things. And I know we've got someone in the audience here today, um, Glenda, who sings in a choir in Perth, and she's supported really well in that choir. So there are fabulous examples of dementia-friendly communities 
groups, organisations already working really well, but there are also lots of bad examples. So to be dementia friendly, you need to include us at every step. Our environment also does need to be dementia enabling. Signage needs to be in line with the dementia enabling um, guidelines, noise levels, things like that in shopping centres are, are seriously distracting to people with dementia. Um, support for our disabilities in the same way any other dis person with a disability is supported and be respectful with the language you use about us and treat us as equals. Yesterday, somebody sitting next to me was introduced as an associate professor and she mentioned to me that she's actually a full professor and, uh, and I felt a little twinge of um, the loss of an identity there. People with dementia have their identity taken away from them all the time, every single day upon diagnosis. We seem to be a person with dementia once we're diagnosed and our pre-diagnosis lives are ignored. We need that back, we need our identities back and we need to be treated as equals. It also, to me, means providing a more ethical, close diagnostic pathway of care and support, one that is enabling and includes rehabilitation not a disabling one that only leads us to age, care and death. And it does m mean in in supporting younger people to remain employed, if that's our choice. Some people choose the bucket list, I'd probably prefer to be employed. And treating the symptoms of dementia as disabilities, so that we are offered the same support as any other person with any other disability. Things like speech pathology need to be offered in our care plans. In fact, we need care plans. That would be a great start. That's been dementia friendly as well. Dementia friendly communities also equates to dignity and care. In South Australia, a senior consultant geriatrician, Dr. Fazel Ibrahim has brought from Birmingham in the UK the 10 Dignity and Care Principles into South Australian hospitals and we're hoping that that is going to be rolled out nationally across Australia. Um, so they're very simple changes in the acute setting but also in aged care that would make the lives of people with dementia significantly better. So zero tolerance to all forms of abuse including physical and chemical restraint. Treating each people as an individual, not just in hospitals and in residential care, but in the community. Respect for everyone's privacy. The same, the same as we all expect before we have dementia. So those principles um, are used with permission from Dignity and Care UK, um, and the Dignity and Care Australia has been given permission also to use the logo, so it's becoming a bit of a, an international um, goal of many people to have Dignity and Care across the board. Dementia Friendly is quite simply about full inclusion, about accessibility, about enablement, not disablement, about equality, autonomy, respect, dignity, the right to be, remain employed, and the use of enabling and respectful language. Without all of these, no community, in my opinion, will ever be dementia friendly. A colleague and friend of mine, also a co-founder of Dementia Alliance International, wrote this after attending Puerto Rico last year, not in a response to the conference, it was a terrific conference. We are just changing in ways the rest of you are not. We have increasing disabilities, and the sooner it is looked at that way, instead of the stigmas, misunderstandings, and complete lies sometimes, the better for all of us living with dementia. We desperately need others to enable us, not further disable us. And I regularly quote John's line, we are just changing in ways that others are not. We are still here. We're not fading away. I'd also ask that communities 
and organisations alike, and that includes aged care and hospitals, have a look at and embrace the Alzheimer's Australia most recently updated language guidelines. And that's about respectful language. It's about empowering language. It is about changing the narrative away from the discourse of suffering and tragedy and one, to one that is far more positive. We need to change language in order to have dementia-friendly communities. And someone spoke yesterday about the very insulting journalist in the UK who basically says we're better off to be euthanised than to block beds in hospitals. We need to change that in places including the media. So our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Martin Luther King is one of my heroes. I'm sure he's one of many people's heroes. But I'd like to thank you for having me here today.